Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about optimization. Now I'm primarily going to be talking about code optimization, though I'll touch a little later on about how you can optimize other parts of the game. But basically what I'm talking about is making code and scripts that are faster and tighter. Faster means it uses less processor cycles and tighter means it uses less memory. Frequently, optimization is a trade-off of these two things. You unroll loops so they're faster but take up more memory. Or you store extra things so they don't have to be recalculated. So you trade off and use more memory so you can save on cycles. However, that's not always the case. In wonderfully rare circumstances, you can find faster, smaller code. The big thing about optimizations that I often find myself explaining to people who aren't programmers, people who often you know, are above me in the chain, is that you cannot do this early. You have to wait to see where cycles are being spent, where memory is being used, and then decide how to save memory and cycles. Perfect example of this, uh, I was talking, um, the, I think it was the, yesterday about the different demos we did for Fallout. And the very first demo we did, which was two years before Fallout shipped, was not optimized. It, it shouldn't have been. You don't want to optimize something that early and then have all those optimizations go to waste when you end up adding more code, changing features. It's It just shouldn't be done that early. A good example, if you watch the Arcanum prototype code, Though that is an example, though, of something that we did very early on once we made those prototypes in Arcanum and had everything reference them for the rest of the game that saved tons and tons of memory. It actually cost us a little, though, on cycles. You couldn't just here's an object. Look at the field. There's your data. Sometimes just look at the object. It doesn't have that field. Now I've got to go to another object and get the data there. But the amount of memory it saved was huge. So we were willing to take the extra few cycles to look up some data. Now, frequently, at least 15, 20 years ago and longer, we used to optimize code by rewriting the C code because we wrote everything in C. C was what much faster and could be optimized faster by the compiler than C++. But even then, we would sometimes take that C code and rewrite it into assembly language. So you would look for loops that were commonly executed. You would look for places that seemed slow in your profiler. And you would look at the code and you'd figure out how to write much tighter assembly code. Up until about 15, 20 years ago, a human could probably write better code than a compiler. This has changed, but it's not universally true. People can still write better assembly code in specific cases. Later, starting about 20 years ago, we started really using more compiler optimization flags, um, which did similar work as a human optimizing. It wrote assembly. And you could say, you know, I want this to be faster. I want this to be sh uh, use less space. So there were different optimization flags you could choose. And you could do it. The easiest way was to take an entire module and optimize it a certain way. But you could also, with using what are called pragmas, isolate specific sections of code and say, I want this optimized a certain way, or I want optimization turned off. Because sometimes optimization from compilers just didn't work. Um, sometimes it would not get smaller or faster, like the flag said it was going to do. Sometimes it introduced bugs. In all those cases, what you were supposed to do was look under the hood. And by that, I mean, there are ways to get the compiler to show you the assembly language output it had generated when it compiled your code. You look at what got created and you fix it. Um, if it's not super important, you can also turn off optimization just for that area where you can, like I said, you can take practice and go just for this area. I don't want to optimize for time. And then it would not make that mistake when it, when it recompiled it. I have noticed a lot of younger programmers, or I should say less experienced programmers, don't seem to know how to do this. 
I've even run into programmers that didn't know that was possible, that didn't know that you could look up the assembly language output from a compiler. Even those that did often viewed it as a waste of time, basically saying it's faster just to start playing with different optimization flags, optimize for different things or optimize for to different um, targets. So you could sometimes specify how much optimization you wanted to do. The flags took parameters. So I found a lot of programmers would just, if something broke, they would start randomly turning off the optimization flags until it worked again. Personally, this scared me a little bit because doing work without knowledge bothered me. But I did witness it being very quickly a method to bring the code back up to functional state much faster than it would have taken for me to comb through the assembly. So I get it and I get why people do it. Let's just say I think there's a trade-off and I think both tools should be in your toolbox. Uh, these days too, um, optimization is a little different. Back in my day, we had to optimize for almost every video card that came out, especially when Super VGA first came out. They were all handled differently, all handled in assembly. You had to write different ones for each one. It wasn't even an optimization. It was just getting it functional. It was hard to write one piece of code that worked on multiple video cards. But even now, PlayStations and Xboxes, their hardware worked differently, especially the PlayStation 3. When I made South Park the Stick of Truth, the cell architecture of the PS3 made it harder to write for and even harder to debug for. You would place a breakpoint on a piece of code and then you'd watch as it would hit that piece of code and then stop maybe right there or right before because multiple processors were running the code and they were distributed. So you didn't always stop exactly where you wanted to. That took me a while to get used to. I've often seen the argument too that optimization these days isn't nearly as critical, which I understand. My argument is it's still important. I see a lot of wasted cycles and wasted memory in uh, some modern games that I worked on. I would see programmers recalculate a value whenever they needed it, even though that value was not going to change, just to avoid either passing that data to other functions or not wanting to store it and then marking it as dirty. That's what we would commonly do. We'd calculate a value. And then whenever anything that that value depended on would change, it would just mark that value as dirty. So if you, the value was clean, you knew you could use it and you did not have to recalculate it. If you saw it as dirty, then you'd call and recalculate it. That's not done very frequently anymore. Um, I would often see Programmers create a large array of data just to get a single element. This was something I saw in a game I worked on. A programmer would ask for an array of creatures in the area purely to get the one that was nearest to the player, which meant they would call a function which would look at all the objects collecting just the creatures, then would put all of them in an array, then it would sort the array, then it would grab the zeroth one off the array and throw everything away. I replaced that with a function that whenever a creature moved, it would calculate its distance to the player. And if it was now the closest one, replaced the value of closest NPC to the player with that value. If it wasn't, then it knew it didn't have to do anything. Similarly, if something died, it would say, okay, everyone has to recalculate who's the closest living one to the player. These are ways of doing optimization that meant when you wanted to know the closest one, which frequently happened, you didn't have to make a, an array and do a sort, grab one and throw it away. That optimization made it both faster and use less memory. So like I said at the beginning, and also I commented on when we when I talked about doing the six different demos for Fallout, optimization is really important, but you can't do it early. It's necessarily something that's delayed so that later on, when a lot of your code is stable, a lot of your data is in, so you see what's going to be processed by your algorithms, 
that's a time to do optimization. Something that you learn very early on in computer science is there's a lot of different sort algorithms. There's no one best one because some sort algorithms don't work well if the array is already nearly sorted. Some don't work well if there's more to sort past a certain value. Like if there's only a few objects to sort, most sorting algorithms work in the same amount of time. So implement one that is easy to use and doesn't use a lot of extra memory. If you have a lot of things to sort, you often then have to pay attention to exactly the pros and cons of the sorting algorithm you're using. There's also one called radix sort, which uses a lot of memory, but you can sort things very quickly with it. There's just some things about the data that have to be true. Because optimization is both something that's pushed to the end of the project and is very difficult to estimate. It's very hard to find a programmer. I don't know if I've ever found a programmer, and I've worked with some smart programmers that can look at a piece of code and will tell you how long it will take to optimize it. They often just have to try different optimization techniques until they get it fast enough or the memory small enough. So optimization often moves into the crunch portion of game development. I'm not 100% sure what the solution to this is because better management isn't something that applies to this. I, I've never met a producer who could do crunch, who could do optimization better than a programmer. But I've also met very few programmers, if any, I don't think I've met any programmer that can properly estimate the time to optimize code. So right there, that tells me that there's something that's going to be unpredictable and how long it will take to achieve the target of fewer cycles, less memory, but will require extra time when you get to the end of your game's development. So good luck people who think that can be managed away. Now, one other thing is optimization, as I've described here, is really part of programming, but design and art can help a great deal with this, with understanding what's expensive to ask for and what's cheap to ask for, and then self-limiting the expensive asks. A good example of that is if your game's gonna have static and dynamic lighting, decide, do you really need that? Are there lots of lights that move around? Because static lighting is cheaper. If you're going to have a lot of dynamic lights, ask how much are you going to have? Is there an upper limit of how many lights can be moving at once? Because that's also methods of lighting can be adapted depending on your answers to those questions. I know an example that happened in Fallout, the original Fallout for the design optimization is the original drug design. Every drug worked wildly different than every other drug. The effects were different, how long they lasted, not just length, but the number of effects they could have and the type of effects they had. And it was gonna be so complex to code, it would have taken months. And I remember suggesting and working with the lead designer to come up with a new generic drug system, which was here is a set of effects drugs can have, they can, vary the effects per drug, they can vary the length of time, they can make different um, time periods where they happen. So that way you can take a drug and you get one effect, and then after a while you get another effect, and then maybe after a while you get a third effect. So you can have drugs that maybe make you really perceptive, but then when the drug starts to wear off, you get really weak, and then they, everything goes back to normal. You can even make drugs that have permanent effects by just, they do something and then they do something else, and it never comes back to, to balance. However, once we had that generic drug system, it worked great and it worked for all drugs. So after that, lots of drugs could be created with pure data and the code was fine. So I guess my final word on optimization for all of the people in management and non-programmers is please listen to your coders when they describe how things are going to be made and then optimized. Keep in mind that many programmers are introverts, so just try to listen extra hard. I know that has saved me on many of my projects, and I also try to speak extra clearly when I'm talking about optimization of my own code. So I hope that helped you all understand exactly what is going on when your programmers say, I need to optimize this piece of code.